welcome everybody to World of Tanks replays. My name is Maxwell, and today's first replays from the user Demiger. That is Demiger, and he's driving the E75 on a standard battle on the Abbey. E75 being a tier 9 heavy tank for the Germans. And I know there hasn't been that many World of Tanks videos this week, and that's just thanks to the fact that it is currently Christmas at the moment. Obviously, been very busy with the family, so. Unfortunately, videos have to uh, take a little bit of a backseat over the Christmas period. So you can probably expect the same kind of thing to happen next week and uh, the week after that. But then hopefully we should get back to normal with a World of Tanks video every single day. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of recording today. So hopefully this should tide us over to at least two or three videos next week on World of Tanks. And uh, obviously you can look forward to the rest of that Divinity Original Sin footage that myself and Redmore recorded one night. If you're not watching the Divinity Original Sin, then you should be, because it's a damn good series and a very, very interesting, very fun game. So, like I said, World of Tanks videos should be at least two or three of them next week, and then getting back to normal after the Christmas period. Also, don't forget that I'm going to be doing a competition this year, as I do every single year in the new year, so it's going to be in January. There will be announcement, uh, an announcement video coming out for it soon, to give you guys plenty of time to know what's going on with the competition, how to enter, and to get your entries in. And that said, there'll be a vlog video for that in the next week or so, letting you know exactly what's going on with that. So Demiga straight away going to be heading to the left hand flank. Going to be attempting to hit that T-43. Already know there's an E-75 and a T-34 lurking in the background. But he does have the support of an IS-3 and an IS-8 here. And a couple more heavy tanks. The MX-5100 making a run for it. Excuse me, he gets hit in the side. As he makes his move to the rocks there. T-43 has a shot but he's not going to find it very easy to penetrate an E-75. So Demiga pokes himself out. T-43 still hasn't penetrated, but he's gotten himself into cover. Not quite enough, although Demiga has his shot and misses. The enemy E-75 makes an appearance. He angles himself very nicely there, and the E-75 just manages to take out his track, not do any damage whatsoever. Demiga feels he's in a good position, so he's going to sit perfectly still. Gets a great bit of damage on the T-34. Unfortunately, the T-34 returns fire and takes out his engine. T-34 has a stupendous amount of penetration for a T-8 tank. Cannon on that thing is very, very dangerous. Enemy E-75 is also at a fantastic angle there. That one just bounces on his lower plate. Not taking any damage in return from these guys. Takes another hit from the T-34 there. T-34 doing a fantastic job of penetrating the armour of the Z-75. So he's pretty dangerous at the moment. Going to have to try and work him down and get him eliminated as quickly as possible. And see, just keeping an eye open. Holding his fire on the E-75 just now, as that's going to be way too difficult to penetrate. Waiting for that T-34, and he's able to get him and get another huge chunk of damage on that T-34. Almost a 1,000 so far. Enemy E-75 not having a very good time of penetrating Demiga's upper plate there. T-34 pokes himself back out again. Looks like he had a shot and just hit the ground there. So Demig is going to fire at the T-43. Sets him on fire, takes him out for kill number one. Now he's got to wait a few more seconds for his gun to reload. Got a very long reload on the E-75's cannon here. Can catch some people off guard. And he's able to get the T-34 before he's able to get into cover. And that's kill number two. Enemy teams pushed very, very hard on that right-hand side. Thanks to the fact that the Allies have pushed halfway down the left-hand flank. And then the rest of the team has sat back on that D-line for some reason. And they're not going to be achieving anything. Having a look to that AMX 5100. Going to see if he's going to drop down. Or whether he's going to come and fight. Gets a lovely bit of damage on the enemy. E75 trying to back off. That T32 just blocking Demiga there. Rather than going around or going inside. E75 focusing in on that IS-3. That's going for the 5100. Demiga's got his gun reloaded. Gets another great hit on the underplate of the E75. And they're going to be exchanging fire. T32 takes a little bit of fire in return. Enemy team still capping the base here. There's nobody really in position to decap. Can he get a shot on the lower plate of the E75? He can indeed. There's a Centurion 1 in the centre. He might be able to do something about this. Uh, nobody else really making a move back towards the base for some reason. E75 sounds like you switched to heat. But the E75 is still a very, very strong tank armour-wise. And he's able to take out the enemy E75 for kill number 3. 
Looks like the enemy tanks have decided to abandon the cap there in favour of trying to take out that Centurion or flank around behind, which indeed they've done, and Demiger comes in to ram the T-29 and take him out. Rather than wasting a whole shell for 16 hit points, just gets him with the ram to take him out for kill number four. Looks like that Tiger 1 is continuing the base capture. While the VK4502 has flanked around the rear of the Allied team here. And that IS-3 has gone up the centre. And this may just be the opportunity that the Allied team needs. So that IS-3, VK and Tiger 1 had stayed in the base. They almost certainly would have been able to finish this base capture. Even if just the VK and the Tiger had stayed in the base they would have been able to win this one no problem focusing in on the lower plate of the vk 4502b unfortunately the lower plate's actually still stronger than the upper plate and the best bet for demiger here would probably be to shoot that machine gun port which is still not really a weak spot or try and hit the commander's hatch on the very top of the turret this vk 4502b is so difficult to damage as you can see two shots at the lower plate there both bouncing Tiger 1 still in the base. There's only 25 seconds left on the clock, so the Allies are going to have to push in as quickly as possible. This VK4502B had just stayed in position. He would have been almost indestructible as it is. He's reversed and turned his turret to try and hit the IS-3 for some reason, and he gets taken out. IS-3 needs one shot to hit this Tiger. He didn't manage to do it. Is there anybody in position that can hit this Tiger? Just got a few seconds left on the clock. Demiger hasn't quite got a shot. One second, and no idea what happened there. I think the artillery must have hit the Tiger 1 there. Or the Tiger 1, for some reason, drove out of the cap circle. Although, with it starting up again, it's almost certainly going to be the artillery decap there. Or the Tiger 1 wasn't paying attention. Ferdinand looks like he's a little bit stuck. Maybe he just went slightly AFK, thinking that one was in the bag with a 99% cap. And the Tiger 1 comes in. Looked like he was going to try and land on top of the Ferdinand, but that one didn't quite work out. He just snuck in behind. Did manage to get some damage onto him, though, which is great. And Demiger takes him out for kill number 6. Tiger 1 has now completely left the cap circle. Demiger just going to abandon that area, thanks to the fact that the T-32 and that other Tiger 1 should easily be able to mop that guy up. In fact, last time we saw him, he only had 68 hit points left. It would be nice to see what actually happened to that Tiger 1, whether he drove out of the cap circle or whether the artillery landed on him. And there you go. He gets taken out by his counterpart, the other Tiger 1, and Demiger going to be heading up the centre here as the Yag, Panther and IS-3 were last spotted in this area. E-75, not the quickest tank. Spots the IS-3 on the left-hand side. Got to be careful, though, because the Yag Panther was last seen on the right-hand side, and he doesn't want to get caught in a pincer move between the two of them. He does have a wreck tank on the left to provide some kind of cover. Yag Panther is on the right. He's a one-shot. Doesn't waste any time. Takes him out for kill number seven. Now he's going to focus his attention on this IS-3. Still got to be careful. The IS-3's got almost a 1,000 hit points, and he himself is a one-shot. IS-3 isn't paying attention, hasn't noticed, gets a great shot into his rear there for 550 damage. His track gets taken out, which is the best thing that probably could have happened to Demiger right now. As he's got that really slow turret traverse. He fires at the strong angled side armor of Demiger, and he gets taken out for kill number 8. A well-deserved Radley Walters medal, and that just leaves the M5355. And this one is all she wrote. Now we're going to move in on the M5355. Demiger's going to try and get the kill on this guy, although he doesn't need it. Already got eight kills and his Radley Walters medal, but still going to make a play for it. Not quite able to land a shot on him. The is is going to come in, maybe just charge around the corner. Although it looks like he is focusing on the area. Artillery comes in, takes him out, and that is GG and the victory. So absolutely awesome. Replay there from Demiger, picking himself up 8 kills and almost 6,500 points of damage rolling down the left-hand flank there 
making all of those tanks his bitch and coming out with the victory after tracking back to attempt the defence. So absolutely awesome replay from you. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget to stick around because as always the score screens and another game are coming right up. And our second replay is from the user Otto Von Nico. That is Otto Von Nico. He's driving the IS-8 on a standard battle on Winter Himmelsdorf. IS-8 being a tier 9 heavy tank for the Russians. This one plays a lot more like a medium tank. It has the speed and the agility of a medium tank. Whilst also having the armor value of medium tanks. It hasn't got fantastic armor. Nowhere near as good as its predecessor. On paper, yes, but in actual battles, nowhere near as good as the IS-3 or the ST-1. So this thing needs to be played a lot more like a medium tank. You use it in an assault role or as a flanker. And uh, if you can get that through into your playstyle, then you're going to be in a much better position than trying to play this thing as a heavily armoured and large hit point pool heavy tank so, <coughs> excuse me so straight away Otto going to be heading to an advanced position down the number 8 line going to be taking cover and seeing who he can spot did see a black prince moving into this position he's going to poke himself out and see if he can get a hit on anybody but it looks like there aren't many people in this location both the T-34s also making a move down the 8 line so Otto's going to use this opportunity to advance Considering that there's nobody else in this position. He's going to head across the open field here. Playing quite risky. And quite aggressively here. But if this can pay off. He can get himself a huge amount of damage. Gets into the centre. Still nobody here. Not sure if he's got sixth sense. So we don't know if he knows if he's been spotted or not. Just having a look to the right hand side. Because there's almost certainly going to be a tank destroyer in that location. And there indeed is. It's a Ferdinand. He gets hit in the face for almost 500 points of damage. Gun on the IS-8 is pretty damn good. Has very nice penetration. Good damage. And some good, so decent soft stats as well. Getting himself into position. Going to see if he can get the gun elevation to hit somebody on the ridge there. Spots a T-34-2. Gets a lovely hit onto him. From all the way down on the ground. Fight's not going to go very well for the guys on the hill. So Otto going to do his best to try and lay some fire down on, onto the tanks on the hill. Just to try and slow their advance. Make them pay for every meter that they want to take. As they do outnumber the guys on the hill about 2 to 1. Finds an ISU. Gets a great shot onto him. Finds the awful panther. Takes a hit from him, but that gun is never going to penetrate even the lackluster armour of the IS-8. Going to be having a look towards the hill again. Does see a T-54, although only his turret was exposed. So that's going to be a difficult shot. They've all but lost the hill now. Just a T-34-2 up there, and he's about to fall. So Otto going to try and get a shot on this Ferdinand or the ISU, depending which one he can see. Let's his gun close in all the way. Takes a great shot on the Ferdinand. Does get hit in the rear. But that was by the Black Prince. And the Black Prince doesn't have the largest alpha damage in the world. GW Panther coming around for some reason. Thinks he can duel it out with Otto Von Nico there. Uh, and... No, no idea what he was thinking there. Why he thought he could win that little exchange there. His gun traversed way too slowly. Does find a Yag Tiger 88. It's a lovely shot through his low plate as he backs off there. Still trying to lay down fire on the guys on the hill just to make them pay for their advance there. Not quite sure where that shell landed. He was fully aimed on the T-54. But sometimes, you know, it just happens that shots do go astray. Takes a hit there from something. Not sure if it was the Black Prince. Uh, the Yagtag 88 even. There's a couple of shots landed there. One bounced and one hit the wall. Bounces a shot from the SU-100M. He's been incredibly lucky at the moment. When I talked about the lackluster armour of the IS-8. Then this guy goes and bounces 90% of the shots fired at him. Guess it all just depends on your skill with angling the armour. Does have some support now. In the form of that LTTB. Gets a great shot through the rear of the Awful Panther just to even that one up a little bit. LTTB is able to take him out. Hopefully he can flank around the rear of these tank destroyers now and help Otto out a little bit. Now SU-152 still waiting in this location. Gets a great shot through his side there. 
And again, I think he bounced a shot from the rear from that Jagtag 88, who is stubbornly refusing to come down from the hill. Nico gets another shot on the ISU 152, but that one didn't go through. Gets hit in the rear again by the Jagtag 88. But again, that one doesn't do damage. There we go. Jagtag 88 finally able to do some damage and takes out the track of Von Nico here. Now he's going to have to spin himself around and pay some attention to some of these tanks on the hill. Most of them are in cover, though, except for this Jagtiger 88, who's not having the best of this duel at the moment. He's gotten one damaging shot, and Nico's gotten one back as well. Can he try and land a shot here? Not quite able to see him. Can only see the very top of the tank body there. we we'll have to play this one carefully. Looks like the tanks on the hill have now started to make a move down the hill. And they are going to race down and try and overrun the allies here. This game is still fairly even at 10 kills to 9. Allies slightly ahead, although their tanks are much more scattered around the map than the enemy team. If the enemy team can stay together, they could pick the win up on this one easily. That T-34 has gotten flanked now by this E-75 Centurion 1 and this T-54. Von Nico does the smart thing of taking out the Centurion 1 as he was a one-shot. Now he's going to back off and try and get himself into cover. Looks like the E75 and this T54 content to go for the base. Rather than heading down and trying to take out Otto Von Nico. That's going to give him the opportunity to get in behind them. LTTB makes a move into the enemy base. Looks like he is trying to cap that one out. And he's also moving into the base here. Nobody really in position to stop this LTTB except that T32 and that Jagtag 88 who have now made a move from the hill. Decides to fire at the T54 there but just Russian accuracy comes into play and that one misses. Both of these guys moved out of the cap circle now. T54 has spotted Von Nico and he backs off back into the cap circle. Otto maybe going to try and get a shot on this E75. He does take a hit in the face from the artillery. He's got enough time just to... Oh, beautiful shot there to set the E-75 on fire and take him out for 672 points of damage, saving his Crusader SP. T-54 comes around the corner just as Otto reloads and he takes him out. Well, tries to take a shot. T-54 doesn't do any damage and Otto does. Gets hit there and his driver gets taken out. Another shot is... A very, very good shot there to damage the T-54 a little bit more. T-54 gets some damage back on to the ISA. That one just didn't go through. Unfortunately, he's run out of AP shells now, so he is using heat rounds. And the heat rounds aren't very good at going through the turret of the T-54. But for some reason, he makes a move and decides to open up the gap between himself and Otto Von Nico. And that probably just cost him his life if he'd stayed in turret hugging. Otto Von Nico was probably going to find that very, very difficult to penetrate his turret armor there. But as it is, he decided to open up the gap, create some space between himself and the IS-8, and that almost certainly cost him his life. If he'd stayed in close, he may have actually won that duel, and if not, it would have at least done a little bit more damage onto Otto. LTTB had to abandon the cap circle there. The Allies are still winning this one, 13 kills to 12. He's making a run for the T-32 and the Jagtag 88, both in and around the cap circle now. LTTB flanking all the way down the left-hand side. Going to see if he can come in at the base from a different angle. If he's smart, though, he probably should hang around on that corner at least for a little while so that he doesn't get himself taken out. Does take a big hit from that T-32 there. He's only got 350 hit points left. Knows he probably hasn't got the penetration to go through the armor at that angle. Has one shot there, but the T-32 had faded away, so not sure whether that one did any damage. Jagtag 88 takes out the LTTB. Not sure why he continued pressing. Should have come back and attempted to help the IS-8 and Crusader SP here. And I said, holding the attention of this T-32, gets a beautiful shot through his turret there. T-32 still trying to flank around to get a shot onto Otto here, but he is reloaded. One more shot takes him out. Kill number five. Crusader SP gets taken out by the Jagtag 88. And unfortunately, Otto Von Nico is down to high explosive shells only. Jagtag 88 was last spotted in and around his cap circle. He's got 351 hit points left, which is two good damaging shots from the Jagtag. Jagtag is 658, which is God knows how many high explosive shells. 
If he hits him in silly places every single time, these HLs might not even be enough to take him out. Because if you hit thick armor with, his, with these HE shells, you may only do between 20 and 50 damage per shot. We'll have to see. Penetration on these shells, not great. 68 millimeters of penetration, but 530 millimeters of damage. He's just going to be moving himself around the cap circle now, trying to find where the Yagtag 88 has gone. To be honest, he's probably slunk off to K4. Because that's going to uh, offer him the best chance of survival against this IS-8. Now, the only saving grace is this, IS, this uh, Yag Tiger 88 has been firing at the IS-8 for quite a lot of the battle and has only done a little bit of damage so far. Not able to find the weak spots of the IS-8. Well, especially over range, but this is going to be close quarters fighting. So surely the Yag Tiger 88 is going to be able to find the weak spots at these close quarters. Moving in towards the cap circle here. D hasn't quite found him anywhere just yet. He's nowhere to be seen. Looks like he may have to just go into the cap circle to pull him out of hiding. There he is on the right-hand side. Takes one damaging shot from the Ag Tiger 88. Hits him in the lower plate and only able to do 114 points of damage. And then the Ag Tiger 88 decides to shoot at the side armor when it's very, very angled. Otto's going to try and flank around. Fires at the side armor again. That one just didn't do any damage whatsoever. He's got to be careful. Only got six rounds left. Can he get in alongside the Ag Tiger 88? Indeed he can. He's got him at a nice angle at the moment. 254 points of damage, which is brilliant there. But he does damage his own gun. His tracks get taken out. The Ag Tiger 88 backs off. That one doesn't do any damage damage as well. The IS-8 playing it very carefully, gets one through his front armour, although it only does 58 points of damage, his track gets taken out again, Yag Tiger 88 backs off, aims his shot, hits him in the gun, that one doesn't do any damage, his main gun gets taken out, he doesn't have a repair kit, he's just got to wait, that one bounces harmlessly off his turret, one more shot, puts it through, takes him out, kill number 6 and 7,000 points of damage, what a nail-biting ending there to that little duel from Otto Von Nico in his ISA just besting the Yag Tiger 88 there. So awesome replay from you, thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget guys if you've got yourself a great replay, send that into replay at screenreality.com, link for that is in the description. Just attach the replay file itself or the link to the What Replay website to the email and I can check that one out for you. And don't forget if you enjoyed this video, you found it useful, informative, you learned something or you just enjoyed it, think about hitting that subscribe button because there's a lot more World of Tanks content on this channel. I have been Maxwell, this has been World of Tanks Replays and I'll catch you guys next time.